will stick around for an hour afterwards, so that way if you have uh, any needs or help with anything, um, I'll be around, okay? I want you guys really in this class to uh, engage, take a ton of notes. I'm gonna give you tips and secrets and all of the stuff that I wish I was given. Um, can anyone remember if there's a star on the page, what that means? Study guys. Boards, Boards and tests. Boards and tests, yes. So, try to make it easy. Still goes off even though my, I turned my volume down and I turned it off. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we are going to start off by a quiz. Who's scared? Are you guys freaking out or are you guys okay with this? So this quiz, all I care is that you participate. This is for you. This is not for me. I'm not going to punk you. I am not here to punk you. I am here to help you guys. You know, I'm sure we've all had those teachers who like to challenge you and make it hard for you. I am not one of those. My goal is to be team ultrasound students and <clears throat> make sure that you guys are successful because if you show up at my workforce as a, as a student, I want you to be your very best. And I want to help you develop in a specific way. And if you don't do good in didactics, then you will struggle in clinical, okay? And so <clears throat> this program moves super fast. So uh, your first week is over and we're on week two. When you get to week three and four, you'll start figuring out things and things will start clicking. If they don't click on week four, come see me, okay? Because um, there's obviously something that you're not doing that you should be doing and I can figure that out for you guys, okay? Um, <clears throat> so with that said, if these quizzes are for you, will I look at them? Possibly, um, and, but that is for participation only. These quizzes are so that you can see where you are didactically. So you know if you have homework or if you have a test coming up, if you failed my quiz, then you are way behind. If you did great, then you're right where you need to be. If you missed a couple, again, you're right where you need to be. But that allows you guys to judge yourself, okay, of where you are. All I care, you will get full participation. You could flunk my quizzes completely and you still get your points for the class. Okay, this is a way for you to go home though and go, oh my gosh, I need to get my own ass. Right? So, so let's, oh yes, I need this. you know. Um, if you did not print it out and you have it on a tablet, then grab a piece of paper or, or if you can write on your tablet, write the answers. Um, I want you to have the answers there. At the end, we'll go through it. Okay. This could be you. I thought of you guys. I was like, yeah. That was me. All right. You've got your gummy bear, so if you need to bite the gummy bear to figure out the answer, that is okay. So the first gummy bear, we're gonna write transverse. And transverse, TRB. From now on, transverse is gonna be TRB. All right, if you cut the gummy bear, transverse, what are you gonna be eating? What size, I want you to define transverse. How is the body being cut? Feel free to eat that gummy bear. That way, if you don't remember, you just take a bite where you where you should be, and that'll tell you the answer, right? Okay. Sag. Moving forward, it's always going to be S A G. Sagittal plane. If you're cutting your gummy bear in a sagittal plane, what parts do you have left? Define sagittal.
And the last one is coronal. Coronal, if you are tracking coronal. What part of the gummy bear do you have left? You are eating his face and his stomach and his toes. What's the abbreviation for Um, this is good. I usually just write Corona, but there's no real universal. Great question, though. There may be one. I just always type it out. I'm not always right. Have you ever used dextra and sinistra in clinic? Have what? Uh, dextra, sinistra, like Latin terms or just English? English. Got it. Yes. yes. Um, all right, number three. Do I have a volunteer for number three? Hold on, hold on. It's like Margaret. Oh, got it. Margaret. <laughs> I had to search for that one. Margaret, what is the answer for number three? Uh, broken into uh, anterior and posterior. Yes, anterior, posterior. And Tanya, to answer your question, that also could be ventral or dorsal. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I, in ultrasound, you're going to use anterior and posterior. Everything's going to be A and T because we measure most things from A to T. Mm -hmm. Okay, but good to know that some doctors will use, um, you know, those other terms. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. Any questions about this? Pretty easy, right? Mm -hmm. Glad you guys have this down. Okay, right next to each of these ones, I want you to label what they are called. These sitting positions. That was nice, I only gave you four. for gallbladder? Gallbladder, you got it. Because the gallbladder, we want to see if, if there is sludge or something in there. We can't sometimes always see it in a supine position. So when we roll them, it kind of moves all those particles, right? And it also, if it's sitting like this, when you roll a patient into LLD, gallbladder is going to fall like this. So you can see a different angle. So we're getting two different angles with it, okay? So the one below it, who wants to tell me what that one is? Left. Left. LPO, what does that stand for? Left Yes. Left posterior oblique. I'm trying to figure out where we are. Um, so we use the first one up here, the left? Yeah, which um, slides we are on. Oh, what slide? Yeah. We're on this slide. I mean, I'm sorry, I just mean. It's in the email. Slide. The email. Oh, the email, okay. I'm confused now. Because oh, we usually under files that we look, 
For example, find the fluid in the pleural cavities. Pleural cavities fluid.
got both transverse and sag. Painting number two. I'm going to have you come up on the board and draw the, where the satchel knot should be and then the box and let us know where everything should be. This is where gummy bears come into play. Oh, I'm satchel. Maybe I mistaked. Uh, maybe it's mess in my head, but I think it would be a head superior instead oh, of right. That's what I had too. Please, well. Yeah, I think something went like wrong, wrong. Wrong with my head.
and trust me, you guys are going to make mistakes along the way, and then you'll realize it um, even when you're scanning. So it happens. It can get confusing sometimes. All right. One, two, three, four. Or chemtronology. Label those. And if it has a unique feature to it, please add that. Man, good thing I can laugh at myself. You guys are going to have to learn to laugh at yourself. Because when you make mistakes like this, it's easy to get in your head. I just laugh them off now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the doctors appreciate it too when you're just honest and you're like, oh gosh, that's all on me. Posterior shadow. Hyperacolic. If it has a posterior shadow, not all of them will, what is it most likely? Bone, some kind of calcification in the body. You can also use the term echogenic as well. Number two, Tommy. Hypoechoic. Remember last week I screwed this one up, right? <laughs> so we'll never mess that one up again. Hypo, a code. And number three, who wants to volunteer? Isa. Asia. Iso Isoechoic. What does that mean? Same as same as the surrounding structures. Same echogenicity. Okay. And number four, who wants to tell me what that is? Yes, anechoic with the edge artifact. Haley, can you tell me what an example of that would be? Um, no, just what anechoic means. If you see something anechoic, fluid, right? Could be bile, could be blood, um, it could be ascites. Any kind of fluid is going to be anechoic. Can we? Um, usually the shape because of sound, and you'll learn why, like the, the specifics in, in physics. Um, but you have a visual here, so when you guys do talk about it, they just go, oh, it makes sense. Because if it's, if we're looking at the aorta in a sad position, we're not going to get that edge artifact, right? Because it's, there's no circle to give that. It has shadowing. Yeah. And it doesn't always have shadowing. There are things that are hyperechoic, and there are things that are echogenic, and then there are things that are calcified. You can use that those terminology, like, yeah, inter interchangeably for everything. Yeah. Do you see if it doesn't have a shadow, most likely bone? Um, the first one? If it does not have a shadow, then I would not say it's bone, and I would not say that it is calcification, but I would say it's just, it is hyper echoic. Now eventually, will it get there? Over time. Mm -hmm. But if you're scanning and you don't see a shadow, then you cannot call it a stone at all. May I ask you about force case? Could we um, add <coughs> one more um, explanation? Posterior enchantment in when transverse this for oh enhancement uh -huh. yes posterior enhancement do we have it here um can anybody answer that oh, I was okay oh she wants to know if there's posterior enhancement in fourth case in, in any one of these 
Posterior enhancement would be number four. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's, we also call it through transmission. So there's a lot of terminal ter terms for one thing. So as a tech, you need to know just in case someone uses a different term than you. But you tend to use the terms that you like. Um, posterior enhancement. She wants to know what the other one was. Anybody? Through transmission. Does every uncork structure have enhancement? Um, no. Again, it's a physics thing, and you'll learn that in physics. All right. By the way, I changed up your guys' quiz at the last night, right? Before I sent it to you, Haley. I, it was kind of difficult, and so I made it a little bit easier. I'm going to have you guys fill in the blanks for these. Yes. 
Yes. Or they have smooth borders. You can use that as well. So you'll put all that together to where it makes sense for you. So tonight when you're studying for this, you can just rewrite all that information and it can sound good. Karen? So is there a, um, a points off system for structuring your sentence incorrectly? Like, no, do you have to have you can one? Do it however you want to do it. Okay. As long as all the information is there. Because then you're going to measure it, and at the end, you're going to say measuring, and there you go. For something like this, you're going to say largest, and you're going to mark measure the largest. Sometimes you're going to measure the largest three, depending on what facility you're at, but that's the most you're going to do. Never do more than three, because the next tech after you is going to be pissed off. Okay? <laughs> Because then they have to follow what you did. Three is your limit. So if you were measuring, like, if you if you were doing this, what would you measure? Like the right side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd measure this big bad boy. And then the one on the left? I would just probably do that one. Yeah. So that nobody gets pissed like, off. Like, clearly the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And it's multiple, so it's diffusely throughout the liver, right? Yeah, yeah, that is METS, by the way. Um, they'll be able to look at things by the end of the program and go, oh, shit, that's up. They have METS. Is it also heterogeneous, too? Um, yes, the organ itself. So, yes, heterogeneous looking right lobe of the liver. It's probably the whole liver, though, so you can probably say liver, but we don't have that information, right? We only have the right lobe. What does that be kind of in context to the uh, actual masses? Or um, you, when you're talking about the liver itself, you can say that, right? But when mass. you're talking about the specific mass or structures in there, then you'll define those of what, what they are. Okay. Yeah. So, and sometimes you can leave one out, as long as you've covered it. Um, hold on, I forget your name already. Margaret. <laughs> Margaret. Jessica. Margaret? I got yours. Jessica. Mm -hmm. Question. Oh. So, so since... Assuming those are all solid masses, yes. when it would be complex. We could say solid. Is yes. Complex not a good term to use for these ones. Um, they're not complex. Okay. I guess if we dropped color, all this dark, this 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 will light up, and that will be peripheral vascularity. Again, you'll learn that. Um, yeah, you can say hypo, Caleb. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're assuming that they're solid because they're hypo because that they're not completely flat. Yeah, absolutely. Because there is a little bit of lighter. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to be solid masses. Yeah. When you put color on it and they light up, you'll see where the dark stuff is. But for now, those are just little baby shippings. Don't overthink it. We'll complicate it later. Uh, what was your name again? Masha. Masha? Masha? Yes. Okay, Masha. Yeah, so my question is, would you call this also focal diffuse or somehow? In that focal way? would not be focal, because focal means just one. one. But diffuse, yes. Diffusely throughout the liver is how you would use that. Again, you don't have to over describe it, but we need to know certain things. Is there vascularity? What do the borders look like? What's the echogenicity? How many are there? So, you guys are doing great, by the way. This is a lot of information. This is why I'm, I'm, we're going through this again. And we will do this every time we have class. So you guys will get better and better and better. Okay. All right, this one over here. Can anybody tell me what it is? Gallbladder with a stone in it. I'm going to want to know, is that stone mobile? This picture doesn't tell you it is. But you should know when you're scanning, all right? So today, let's just say it's mobile because I don't see it stuck in the head. The head is right here. So it's most likely mobile. Now it's got that posterior shadowing and that's what's giving it away so it's a calcification yep 
You guys are going to learn in physics when you put color on something that's calcified, you're going to get what we call the twinkle sign. Twinkle sign is like you're, it's going to light up in all different colors, basically. And uh, you'll learn in physics why it does that. So for this one, you're just going to say, now, as a student, you're going to describe everything. Once you get into the clinical world, depending on where you work, like the hospital I work, they just ask us, is there a stone? Yes or no. And is it mobile? Yes or no. And what's the size? But as a student, you guys are going to have to write everything out. Okay? Because there will be some places that you work at and they will make you describe it technically and then they make the decision. But once you become a tech and uh, around here, they usually trust us to know where the stone is. So as a student, you'll always define it. Even in your clinic, just define it in your clinical study. Define it, then mark the correct boxes, and then ask your clinical instructor what they prefer you to do. Because when you're new, sometimes you don't trust the student, right? Yeah. All right, let's move on. Any questions about this? I'm just uh, assuming you guys described it, right? Because it's focal, there's one. Right, it's hyperechoic or echogenic is what I prefer to use with posterior shadowing in the gallbladder lumen is how we say it. Again, we'll touch on the, this is all kind of like I'm just having a few advanced things so later when we talk about gallbladder you're already going to know that we're going to talk about the lumen. All right. Any questions? How do you guys feel? This was all the information you learned last week. You actually learned something. <laughs> See? You're a lot farther than you thought you were. Okay, oh, the scary one. Do your labels really quick. You guys all did your clay models. Thanks for um, showing me your pictures. And pretty much everybody stayed for the most part. And, uh, and that was amazing to watch you guys do. And in order to move on today, you have to know all of these. I'm just look up so I know that we're done.
said volunteer. <laughs> How do you like that? Um, to walk you guys through what is what, I already approved his. And so hopefully you guys get it right. And uh, and feel free if you want to ask them what it is too. You're, you're in charge, boss. Ah. All right, let's start at the very top. Yeah, I'll start off first. So, okay. Uh, you can visualize like uh, when you're scanning someone, as you can see from the screen, it's on like the left side, and the halo on the right side. And you have this uh, pretty complicated thing. Yep. Like you learned this right, left, and middle. Yep. We're going to learn that today. So those are hepatic veins. Hopefully that's what you labeled them. All right, let's go down. What's uh, on the aorta? What's the next thing? What's that big, weird three or four thing? Oh, over right here? here? Yeah. Oh, uh, you got the cephalic artery. That's the type of trunk. There you go. Celiac trunk. Celiac trunk. My celiac bad. trunk. My bad. They also call it the celiac access. Again, there's multiple names for it. And what does that branch into? Uh, that branch into uh, this one, the uh, left gastric artery. Yep, left the, gastric. Around the stomach area. Yep. And you got the uh, hepatic. Hepatic, because it's going artery. to go feed the liver. And then splenic artery. Splenic, because it's going to feed the left side, yeah. spleen. Perfect. And then you got the SMA. The little elephant trunk. And what is it smashing? What could it smash with? Uh, left renal. Is he right? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Then what we got? And you got the right renal vein. You go to the, you know, kidney tissue. Yep. Yeah. And then you got the common in the iliac vein and also the artery. Uh huh. And then when you scan, you see that divide the bifurcation. The bifurcation. Yep. Uh -huh. Perfect. So we got the left, the right. Um, and when it comes to the kidney, thank you, oh, Tommy. Okay. Thank you. You guys want to give my hand? Thank you. I feel like we're in a sorority house. <laughs> um, which one's posterior in the re renal veins? The, or is it the veins or the arteries with the renal vessels? Arteries. Arteries are posterior. It's going to be a board question and it's going to be on everything that you have to know. So. All right, good job. See, Tommy, you never thought that you would run class before. Here we go. We're going to talk about the liver today. I wrote, somebody requested a 3D, so there you have it. That is the 3D. So we're going to talk about the liver, the front and the back today, all the vessels in it. We're going to talk about the variants, the location in the body, lobes, ligaments and fissures, hepatic veins, portal veins, and portal hepatitis. It is a lot of stuff. We've got an hour and 10 minutes to cover everything. Next week, we're going to talk about the gallbladder and the pancreas, which is not a whole lot of information. Uh, so we'll spend the first hour next week basically doing what we did today um, and making sure that you guys understand this information. Now the liver, largest organ in the body. So there's going to be a lot of parts to it, okay? So we're also going to use terms like intrahepatic and extrahepatic. Can anybody tell me what the difference is between those two words? Inside and outside of the yes. liver. Yes, one is inside the liver, intrahepatic, and one is outside, extrahepatic. You're going to need to know that these terms for your pathology classes and you're gonna to need to know these terms for other classes. This one, not really a big deal, but I thought I would add that for you guys um, because stones can be stuck somewhere in the hepatic, right, in the, in the liver, or they can be external, they can be outside of the liver. And so when you're describing and, and you're learning pathology, I wanted you guys to have those terms. All right. Whew, this one has a star on it. It is a lot, but uh, I didn't want you guys to have to write anything down. And if it is highlighted and underlined, that's what you need to know. So the liver is the largest parenchymal organ. It is not the largest organ. Everybody thinks it's the largest organ. The largest organ is what? Skin. Skin. That's why we say parenchymal. Okay? And what does that mean? And parenchymal means uh, tissue, um, yeah, kind of like 
Kind of like an organ. Yeah. Parenchyma means, parenchyma means tissue. I know it kind of sounds weird because you think skin is tissue too, but it's a different, it's a different kind of tissue. Um, within the majority of its bulk in the right lobe, located in the right upper quadrant, whereas the left lobe is positioned within the epigastrum and may force the midline and extend into the left hypochondria. Boring stuff, I know. I believe you need to know this for another class, and it might show up on your boards, okay? Um, in some people, the left lobe of the liver may actually come in contact with the spleen, okay? And there is a name for that called beaver tail liver. I have not ever seen one, just so you know. Um, so the odds of you finding one are slim to none. And it's not something that you guys even cover in PATHO, I just wanted to put it in here for you, just so that you know it exists and if it shows up on your board. This is probably the only time you're gonna hear this. So, <clears throat> it's also known as a sliver of liver. It's a variant of the hepatic morphology where an elongated left liver lobe extends lateral to contact um, the spleen, basically. So, very super rare. Now, one that is not rare is the next one. And I guarantee you that this one's always gonna show up everywhere for everything. And this is right of lobe. And some people, that right lobe of the liver may actually extend inferiorly, okay? As far as the iliac crest. You guys know what the iliac crest is? That'd be the top of our hip bone, right? Yeah. That's crazy to have a liver that far. But cool, maybe you can connect your stuff for us. Maybe you can drink more, who knows, right? <laughs> and um, so what I did is I'm showing you guys some images of what it looks like. So Rydell's lobe here on the left there, um, you'll see it will extend past that kidney and that's not normal, right? A normal, a normal liver will go end like right now or end up here. So this is definitely a right L slope. Now, does anybody care? Does a doctor care if you point it out and say, oh, they got a right L slope? No, they do not care. Do the boards care? Boards care that you know that. Strange, right? Nobody cares except the boards. Um, this is what it looks like on a CT. So see how it really hangs pretty low? It's crazy cool. Seen several right elbows. No, again, nobody cares. Nobody how do cares you, if your gallbladder is an anomaly either? We'll talk about that. Yes, Sandra. How do you differentiate enlargement of uh, liver and the slope? Ah, sometimes you cannot. Uh huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you're measuring it, right? And that's where the radiologists come into play because they're going to look at your images and they're going to be the ones who get to determine. Is this a Rydell's lobe, or is it an enlarged right lobe? They get paid the big bucks. You just take the images. <laughs> All right, and then the beaver tail, this is the only picture I could find because it's pretty rare. But see how it's, this is your spleen right here, and it's just, where's the spleen? It's the end. You guys see, is this in your way, by the way? No, it's fine. So beaver tail, it didn't show up on my boards, but some people will have it on their boards. Uh, right L's low, definitely gonna be on there. Liver location, liver is located in the right upper quadrant. I know you guys have not had your liver class yet for this, so I will cover a little bit more than, than normally so you guys understand everything. Um, it is inferior to the right hemidiaphragm, superior to the right kidney and right Hepatic flexure of the large intestine. That is right here. Right? And so you've got ascending, transverse, descending. And so it is right, that's where we go. You can't see your test is ultrasound anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But good for you to know that that's where it's located. And it is anterior the aorta and IVC. Okay, liver location, inferior to the right hemi diaphragm. 
The diaphragm, you guys will need to know, is echogenic. What's that mean? It's going to be bright. It's going to look like almost a capsule. And so I kind of created this picture for you so you could visualize where it goes in that pocket. Because you may see a little of it superior, that diaphragm. You may see a little of it on the right, but you're definitely going to see it in the posterior aspect. So when you're scanning, that little bright guy, you just pop uh -huh. this in and you'll see where you might be able to, to see it almost done. You're always going to see it almost done. Okay, so it's going to be that bright thing. But the liver is inferior, important to know that, and the diaphragm is echogenic. By the way, this will all come together when you guys actually scan. Okay, so I know it's a lot of information. Liver location again. Um, last week I got some feedback. You guys want a little more 3D, so I tried to find some 3D stuff. And this kind of just gives you an idea of how we're going to be scanning that liver and how it's going to be sliced. All right, important to know. Liver sits anterior from your great vessels. And which great vessel actually goes through the liver? IVC. All right, liver lobe. The liver is divided into a large right lobe and a small left lobe by the attachment of the falciform ligament. So grab a piece of paper, clean sheet of paper, everybody. Want to draw your liver? You're draw an anterior, and you're going to draw a posterior. Remember, I'm not the best artist. Have you guys draw them and we are going to add to your pictures today so make it fairly big because we're going to learn all the vessels and everything and we're going to draw them in this would be a great time to have your colored pencils your crayons your pens out whatever you want so much easier to learn it if you do it as we walk through it so that's on my my liver so we've got a right this is going to be the right because the person is sitting here and this is my right. Okay? So we're anterior. This is the right. This is the left. So I'm going to, I'm going to divide it by my ligament here. Falciform. Falciform. Falciform ligament. Label your ligament. So which side of the liver is larger? The right. The right. Which side of the river uh, which side of the liver sits behind most of the rib cage? The right, the largest part of the liver, and you need to be able to slice that and get us some images, is hidden by ribs. And that is why we may have to roll them. That is also why you have to take that big deep breath in. Okay. All right, does everybody have their little falciform ligament in there? All right, so the right lobe is further divided by a quadrant lobe and a caudate lobe. Now, when I when I went through this program, I, it took me probably to the end of the program to actually realize what those were. So we're going to draw them today, and you guys will never have to worry about it, okay? And so let's move on. I'm going to leave the next slide so you can draw it. Here it is. And here's the interesting thing in the back. You've got your IGC, right, going through. This is the posterior side now. Right here is the quadrant lobe. And right here is the quad lobe. So I want you guys to think of it this way. This is how I finally like it clicked. This is the falciform ligament on the other side. So this is the left side of the liver. This is actually the right side. So that means the caudate lobe is right in between, mainly in the right lobe, but right in between the left and the right lobe. You're going to 
actually see this when you scan. You will not, however, see this quadrant. But look at it as in you're dividing it, here's your left lobe, and you've got your caudit, your quadrant, and then the rest. So let's draw that in really quick. So if I divided this again, we've got the left lobe here, I'm dividing it, and let's just say I'm going to use basic, let's just say we do this, here's your quadrant lobe, here's your quadrant lobe, this is the right, this is the left. You can draw, you can be fancy, however you want to be. I just want you guys to remember that that's really what it looks like. And you will see that the caudate lobe. And the reason why it's important to know where these are located, the right and left, because there are going to be vessels and ligaments that we learned today. And some are going to be in the left, some will be in the right, and then some divide the left and right. And some divide the right into anterior and posterior, right? And some medial to lateral, some in the left. So we need to know the basics. So this is your foundation for the liver. Any questions? Yeah. And here's what it looks like. Give you guys a visual. Someday when you get to scanning the liver, this whole thing is your audit lobe, and then you get the whole entire IDC, right? Because it's going through the liver, and then you're not going to see anything after that, typically, because this is the star of the show. This is the left lobe of the liver, the lobe, and IDC. And we're going to learn soon, what the heck is this right line? Any questions? Can you define caudate lobe? Like what exactly? Caudate lobe, I don't really use it. I mean, I don't know the details. I think that's going to be more in your anatomy. That's just where all the um, veins are coming out of at one um, spot. And arteries? Not necessarily, no. Because it's like right in between both the caudate and the quadrant. We call that something else. Okay. okay. Um, in the class that Brain is teaching you is where you're going to learn like the details and like functions. But since this is just cross-sectional, I just want you guys to understand the cross-sectional aspect of it. Um, is that uh, in diagonal or? Um, yes. And how did you figure that out? So you definitely are like this. So this is anterior. This is posterior. That's correct what we did bad today. This is what? Superior. Yeah, superior. Inferior. Yeah. Nikki, may I ask you? Oh, yeah. Officially, we have two lobes or four lobes? Uh, uh, liver has two lobes or four lobes? Four. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't use the quadrant lobe. So when it comes to ultrasound, and ultrasound only, we only consider it having three. Mm -hmm. Okay. The right and the left, and this bad boy. If Bode asks us what's the answer, you're never going to get any questions about the quadrant because the quadrant lobe does us no good in ultrasound. We can leave that for the medics or the, the doctors, right? Okay. People in med school. I don't want you guys to learn more than you have to because your brain's already going to be full. So try to keep it simple for you. All right. Quadrant lobe, just in case it is on the posterior side. There it is. We don't use it in ultrasound. Just know where it is now. All right. So let's talk about these ligaments. Falciform lig ligament, it's thin, sickle-shaped, fibrous structure, connects the anterior part of the liver to the ventral, which means anterior part of 
the wall of the abdomen. So that's what attaches and holds the liver anteriorly. So that's just a little visual picture for you, and that's what this guy is. And it's got a star on it. You are not going to see the falciform ligament, um, or we don't look for it in ultrasound because it's not that big of a deal. Unless it looks like this. This is a sick liver. This is a cirrhotic liver. This is somebody who either had hep B, had, had hep C, had alcohol problem, and their liver is shrinking now. And it's liquid. And that would be where the falciform ligament is. Oh. Okay, you see this? This right here. And ligaments are always going to be what? Exogenous. Mm -hmm. Okay? So is that's it how you're going to know. Yes, Tanya. Astitis? Uh, water in the abdomen? Astitis? Is it water around? Oh, this is all fluid. Yep. Yep. We call it ascites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's advanced. Very advanced. You guys learn that in pathology. So, but I just wanted you to see what it looks like when you can actually see, you know, when we're actually looking for it. Uh, Margaret. Yeah, so A and B are both the same. Yep. Same things, different views. Okay. Same thing, just different views. Okay. That small, tiny, sick liver. So because the liver shrinks, the ligament doesn't really, so you mm -hmm. kind of like to see it more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other than that, we're not looking for the, this ligament. We just need to know that it's there. Okay? And ligamentum venosum. Let's talk about that and the round ligament. So the round ligament of the liver is also called ligamentum teres. So it has two names. I like teres. You can use round. But you need to know that they're they're used both of them for the same thing. So I remember again when I was a student, I'd get confused. I'm like, what's the round ligament? I know what the terrace is. I know the falciform, right? And I know that it, it, it's the same thing as the terrace. So round terrace, same thing. So important for you to know that. <clears throat> On the posterior aspect, you're going to see it here. It is attached to this ligamentum venosum. And I'm going to show you in better language. So ligamentum teres comes right off of that falciform ligament. And the reason why people call it round is because it's this little round guy. Now you're going to see it when you scan. But we don't look for it. We don't search for it. It just shows up in a picture. and you need to know what it is, okay, as a landmark. Yes, Bree? When you have, because I'm paying attention to the stars that you have in the yes. images, um, for this, are you, like, wanting us to be able to, like, label this whole thing, or are you mostly focusing on the ligament itself? Just the ligament that I um, have highlighted okay. in the image. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do it all in one that would be just confusing. So I'm doing one at a time for you guys. And then you can layer it when you're ready. Ligamentum venosum. Again, we're in the posterior aspect of the liver. Now, this is, um, this is a fissure. It's going to be echogenic when you compare it to the normal tissue here. Remember I said we're going to find out what this is. Anyone remember what this is? If this is the left lobe up here, what's this? Caudal. Caudal lobe. You got it. So the ligamentum venosum actually divides the left liver from the caudal lobe. You will use this because we use this in every, almost every image of the liver. And I guarantee you'll get a picture of it on your boards. And they'll probably point to the ligament, they'll point to the lobe, and they'll point to the caudal lobe. They might even point to the IGC, and you'll have to tell them what it is that they're pointing at. 
Just repeat what part? Or what it divides? Oh, it just divides the left lobe, which is right here. This is the left lobe of the liver. And this is the cotic lobe. So, it divides the two. And the IVC is that thinner. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. So the IVC pulls this because it's so close to the, the heart that this picture, they just thought it when it was almost closed, right? Ligamentum venosum. Any questions? Yes, and I forgot again. Masha, Masha, Masha. Masha. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, do we see the right lobe in here? Nope. Only see the left lobe. Right. Yep. Because when we are scanning, that's a great question, Masha. When we scan, we are going to either scan the left lobe or we're going to scan the right lobe. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't do them together because we're gonna slice it like this sagittally, and then slice it like this transversely. And then we're gonna take the right, and the dome's gonna be up here. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna slice this into pieces, and slice this into pieces. Why? Well, we're gonna learn why, because we wanna make sure that all the vessels are in the right places, going in the right direction, making sure there isn't pathology in there. So. That's why I wrote in one of the earlier pictures, you probably noticed LLL. That means left liver lobe. RLL means right liver lobe. So you don't have to type it all out, okay? Nobody wants carpal tunnel from typing out these words. So it's universal here in ultrasound. All right. Main lobe fissure. You are gonna see this on the anterior aspect. It is the main divider of the liver into fairly equal right and left lobes. Guarantee that shows up on your test and everything. What divides the, what ligament or what structure divides the left from the right in equal parts? You're gonna say the main lobe fissure. And it is a fissure, which is similar to a ligament, right? And it's right here. So, it is always going to be attached to that gallbladder. That's how you're going to know that you're on the main lobe fissure. Because it attaches down to the portal vein. So, the left lobe and the right lobe, they're not divided by the fossiform ligament? They are. There's going to be a long list, which I don't want to confuse you yet today. I want you to just study the terms. And then next week, we're gonna write that list of what divides what where and have one list for you guys to look at, okay? So I'm confused, mm -hmm. the main lobe fissure mm -hmm. and then what she just said, the false yeah. form ligament. They're in different places. So on the posterior aspect, what do we find? What ligament do we find? False form. So, remember, we only care about the right, the left, and the quadrant lobe. All right, so let's start there. Three lobes. If we want to say there's four, what's the fourth one? The quadrant, but we don't care about that one. So you just have to know that it exists. But right, left, quadrant. All right, so this falciform ligament in the anterior aspect of the liver divides it from left to right. Posteriorly, the ligamentum venosum, and what you're not gonna see on this image because it's internally in the liver, is the main lobar fissure. And that actually is internally, and it's more like over here internally. So, you know how earlier we said the liver, the left lobe is smaller than the right lobe? When it comes to the main, um, low fissure, that actually divides them into equal parts, right? So that means the right and the left kind of end up being similar in size, even though they aren't. But we use it as a way to divide gallbladders here. This is where that fissure is going to be, but it's inside 
So it's not anterior or posterior, it's inside. So, so technically the claudate and the quadrate are in the left lobe? Uh, they're, they're, actually in the the right, they're actually in the right lobe. Yes. They're located in the right lobe. So basically the region where the darker to lighter is the right and left lobe, that's the main fissure right there? On that image right there? Yeah, this one right there. Yeah. Okay, it's just not labeled for one. It's called the median fissure. Again, there's a million different names for it. We use main lobe fissure. And are we looking at this in front first? Or how are we um, What do you think? Oblique? Transverse, look a tiny bit over. Because, how do I know we're in transverse? Here's the portal vessel, and it's round. Mm -hmm. Portal vein is round. That's what's telling me that it is transverse. Okay. I know when you look at all of this tonight and put it together, it'll make more sense. It would have made a lot more sense if you guys had lectured with Shay. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because <laughs> she goes into all these details for you guys. And you'll still have that. Uh, What's the L stand for? Liver. Liver. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. This will come together. Don't stress about it. All right. Um. What are the? Yes. And it the line is extending, like I said, from the portal hepatis to the gallbladder neck. So anytime you guys see the gallbladder, you see this line, and we call this portal up this, we'll, we'll talk about that soon. It's a portal vein. This is gonna be the main lobe fissure. The main lobe fissure does a lot of different things and um, for division in the liver. But we'll talk about that later. I just want you guys to know where it's located at this point and know it. Okay, so just to summarize, I put one page. This is what it should look like. So you got your ligamentum venosum. Ligamentum teres, you will see that. We don't look for it though. It's just nice to know what it is when you see it. And then the main lobe fissure. But you're gonna use that for a lot of things. Okay, let's talk about vasculature. All right, all right, we're gonna go back to drawing. Lots of drawing. And trust me, we'll recover all of this next week. It'll make sense when you guys have Shay's lecture. Um, I'm trying not to go into too many details because it'll take away from her class. But at the same time, you kind of need some information for things to make sense. Um, and we, I don't want to run out of time. Okay, vasculature in the liver, we'll have the IPC, we'll have that aorta. We've got hepatic vein, portal vein and hepatic arteries. So we're going to cover all three. We're going to draw those in with your liver. So we're going to start with the veins. Hepatic veins drain into the IVC. So they are going to be draining superiorly. I think of the hepatic veins like this. If I was a claw, they're like this. So they run in a sagittal plane because what are they doing? They're like a straw. They're sucking it up, putting it into the IVC, which is right here. And the IVC is then putting it, dumping it into the right atrium of the heart. Okay? So it's like a little, three little straws, basically. There's a right, middle, and a left. Where do you think the right is? In the right, in the right lobe. Ah, see, something easy. And the left? The left, the left lobe. lobe. And in the middle, right in between. So it's three little straws sucking up stuff and putting in the IVC, put it in the heart so it can get oxygenated. All that stuff you'll learn in another class. But for now, you just need to know where they're located, what they're called, okay? And so they drain securely. And the portal veins go run superiorly as well. And then you're going to see, see the arrows? It's going to go up and then they run in a transverse plane. Those are feeding the liver, okay? The only vein that actually
actually feeds the liver, right? Usually it's an artery, right, that feeds all of our organs. This happens to be feeding the liver, and yes, it's a thing. I'll break it down now. Okay, so let's start with these hepatic veins. As you can see in the image, you've got the right, you've got the middle, and you've got the left. Hepatic veins are blood vessels that return low oxygenated blood from your liver back to the heart. These veins, three of them, drain into the IBC, as you know, the hepatic veins, they increase the size as they approach the diaphragm. That's why I said if I was a claw, right, do with your hand, they're going to get larger as you're getting to the IBC. Okay, little straws. Hepatic veins have a triphasic blood flow pattern. Um, I put this in here, if you don't need it for this class, you're going to need it for your other classes, okay? Uh, but triphasic, can anybody tell me what that, that could possibly mean? So three, yeah, tri, three. And so you'll learn in physics that the reason why it has a triphasic flow is it's close to the heart, and the heart is beating. And so these vessels are going to have the same flow as the heart, okay? That's the basic of it. You'll learn in physics and other classes. Um, I just wanted the information to be in one place for you. Pedophanes are oriented more sagittal, like we said, in the liver. So they're going to run superior, inferior, inferior, superior, north, south, south, north. Okay. Middle hepatic veins. Here's one of our separators. Separates the right lobe from the left lobe. There's going to be a list. We'll create a list. But right now, we've got two things that we know separate the left and the right in exact left and right. One of them is the middle hepatic vein, and the other one is the falciform ligament. All right, we're going to draw these into our liver really quick. So grab your blue pen so that you know the vein, label it, add it. And since, since the falciform divides left and right, that means that that middle one needs to be right around here, right? Um, the left one here. Is that the same as the lobar fissure? The middle uh, one? Main no, lobar? this is the falciform. We're just looking anterior. Okay. Don't worry about posterior yet. Um, and then main lower fissures inside the liver. Uh, yeah, yeah. So don't stress about that. Okay. You'll hear about it in every class and you'll, you'll slowly learn. So I'm going to grab my blue pen. And my that you are better art, art student than I am. Mm. All right. Transverse, this is what they look like. So you know, once you do ultrasound, trust me, you don't need to be here. I just want you to know what they're going to look like. Don't try to wrap your head around this. Just say, okay, when we scan the liver, I know that this is what they're going to look like. That's it. Otherwise, you're going to get overwhelmed trying to figure out where you're at. Don't worry about it. Are we doing 
So when I was in school, I remembered these two terms. And I think these terms you guys will be using in Rain's class if she didn't already talk about them. And um, <clears throat> pedipedal, I always mentioned, I always thought, okay, we're swimming towards, right? When I've got my, my little paddles, right? And then away, I paddled. What was the other one? You guys remember? Did she talk about this in class, by the way? Because you're all looking at me like, I don't even know this term. Uh, okay. Cross sectionality was canceled yesterday. That's right, that's right. So there's hepatopedal and hepatopedal. Um, I always think of it as a fungi. And we are, that, that's going away. Like, please make that go away from me. Okay? That's how I remembered it. You guys will cover those terms, but just so you understand what that means. And monophasic. So what does mono mean? One. 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 Yeah. Again, you're gonna learn that in physics, you guys. Don't get overwhelmed. What I want you to remember today is that we have portal veins, and that we have hepatic veins, and that we have fissures, and where they're located. Okay? That's the goal of today. Here you go. This makes it so much easier. We're going to draw this. So, we've got your splenic vein coming from the spleen. And it's a vein, so it's going towards your liver. And look, it picked up the IMV on its way to meet Mr. SMV, right? And now they're coming together to create the main portal vein. So here's their marriage up there. Okay? Main portal vein is confluence. Um, yeah, just call it main portal vein. Yeah, because I'll teach you the other term and why. Mm -hmm. We have to add a few things to it. Mm -hmm. And then that main portal vein branches, right? The right side goes, does anybody remember the right because the right is so large? Anterior, posterior. And then the left does what? Medial and left, yeah. So all we need is one branch for that left. So let's draw that into our drawing. Just copy the image. 
Okay, let's see if you guys do this right. It gets confusing. I was telling Haley I had to brush up on this myself, you know? I'm so used to it sonographically now, but uh, it's different when you have to draw it all out. All right, so we start with the splenic vein, and it's gonna pick up the IMV, which means what? Inferior mesenteric. Then they're gonna travel together. They're gonna meet up with Mister. Got it. It's gonna create a union. And now they change their name. Main quarter. Main quarter vein's gonna enter the hilum here.
she'll teach it and you'll laugh and you'll understand it much better. But just know that your portal are gonna go in a transverse direction, your hepatics in a sacral. So that means that these ones going easy way, right? And then they split. And then they go this way, they go this way, they go this way. So that's the direction they're going. And this one is going this way. No. Well, we only have 10 minutes, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to stop here next week? We start from here? No. Yeah. We have a lot. We're not all the way through 10. I can see your faces and your little local round. So let, let's do this. I'm going to run through the slides really quick. Just get you comfortable with them. Next week, we'll pick up here and we'll really discuss it. Okay? 
It's kind of hard because you didn't have Shay's lecture, and I get that. I know the Havens thing, and so I'm basing everything on the Havens thing. Okay. And she's done. So I'm assuming all of the rest of you guys are like at that same point. And that's what Jason said. So you guys, we're going to have an artery. It's called the common hepatic artery. And you remember how we had a branch from the aorta that came off of the celiac tract called the hepatic artery? All right. Well, it's going to travel into the liver, and that's where we call it common hepatic artery. They call it the proper hepatic artery, common hepatic artery, or hepatic artery. Yes? So just the hepatic artery crosses it from yeah. the trunk. Nothing like going to it? Or to it. Nothing special. Okay. Yeah. You're going to see that the GBA will come into us, but we don't need to know this. So you're just going to, so briefly I'm going to cover this in 10 minutes, all of this, and then, and overwhelm you. And then you can look at it, study it if you want, and then we'll go into detail. But just know the hepatic artery is going to go and feed the liver. By the way, the portal things feed the liver as well, right? Portal veins feed the liver. I think it's like eighty percent of the cancer comes from the portal vein and not the hepatic artery. So this is the only time where veins and arteries are completely different than everything you learned in anatomy. So we'll talk about this more. Then we're going to talk about next week the CBD and how it travels up into the liver. Because then we're gonna talk about, well, after that, next week we're gonna be drawing this, okay? We're gonna put everything together. So this is what the confluence that we talked about, and this is the portal triad. The portal triad, by the way, is all three of these vessels coming into the hilum together. So it's like taking a bunch of cords, right? You've got at home, let's just say you're at home, you've got your computer cord, right? You've got your light cord, and you're putting all three of them together, and you're going to marriage them, basically. You're going in two different directions, but this is what's happening. You've got the veins, the arteries, and you've got the common bile duct. They come together at this little hilum here. So we'll go into detail. I won't expect you guys to know it next week, but we're gonna draw it all out. And we'll talk about the function. Oh, and you notice hepatic artery and portal vein, they both are going superior, right? And what's up with the common bile duct? It's going to arrow down. Yeah, because it's coming out of the gallbladder. So one is going draining and two are feeding. Okay, so we'll talk about that in detail. We call it, when you chop it like this in the transverse plane, Called the Mickey Mouse sign. Because you'll have the common bile duct, the hepatic artery, and the portal vein. You see how big that portal vein is compared to the hepatic artery? That's why it's feeding to the liver 80% of its nutrients. And it's being drained from the IMA, right? And the SM, or IMB and the SMB. So it's getting all the nutrients from the stomach. So we'll talk about this next week. This is what it looks like sonographically. And there's more. And then I gave you this one that you can label yourself, but we'll do that next week as well. Mickey Mouse sign. Easy way to remember it, ABCs. Mickey Mouse, right? Isn't it kids? Yeah, when I study it, I'm like as basic as it gets. So three, hopefully all of my basic help. But CB, the CBD is A, the hepatic artery is B, and the big fat one is what? Main portal vein. Main portal vein, right? The portal vein. And how do you tell when you're scanning which one is which? Well, if you go with your ABCs, you'll always know. C comes first in the alphabet, then H for hepatic artery, and then P. So if you look at your Mickey Mouse ears, you should know which ear 
So C over here, H here, over here. We'll talk more about that. And then this is if we're going in a sagittal plane, what it's going to look like. And then again, some more labeling. Then we have something called the double barrel sign. We'll talk about that. That just means there's a stone somewhere and there's a blockage and the CBD should never be as large as the portal vein. And in this case, it is. That's a bad sign. We'll talk about that. And then we're going to design all of this. We're going to do a little bit of clay work from the next three. And then we're going to put it all together. I've got a video for you. This one here is showing you how you're going to scan the left lobe of the liver. Chop it into three pieces. Then you're going to go dash and you're going to chop the left lobe into three pieces. You're going to do the same exact thing with the right lobe. Since it's bigger though, you're going to take four to five images instead of three. Okay. And then these are just ultrasound images of me testing you and just what you think things are. Is it okay if you're wrong? It's your second week, it is okay. Again, me testing, see you know where we're at in the body. A little bit of describing, using your terms, making sure that you stay up on your terms. Terms. And then again more terms. So and then this is just practice for you guys at home. If you want to practice. You don't have to go home and create all the stuff that I did. <laughs> Just gave it to you guys. So you can practice setting, and you can practice setting here as well. So again, you don't have to create it, reinvent the wheel. <laughs> and that would have been it for lecture. So we'll hook up on the hepatic artery next week, you guys. We'll play with some Play Doh. Definitely come prepared knowing your hepatics and your portals, though, um, so we can add to that. Uh, if you want to stay around and do more play dough, you can certainly do that. Um, I will stick around for an hour if that works. That way, if you guys have questions or need help with anything, I'm sorry that this week is overwhelming because we missed that class, and uh, and I get that and I understand that. Um, one thing I did want to share with you guys is this book. Has anybody talked to you about this book? No. This is the Penny book. You should buy it. And uh, for your registry, your exam. This is what I use. This is the only thing I use. There's daisies. There's so many things out there. But this was well worth it because this comes with a CD and you can test yourself with test questions and stuff like that. Now, you guys are nowhere ready for this book, okay? But this is a book you do want to buy um, probably towards the end of your didactic year here. Um, when I went to clinical, I would take a section every week and test myself, and that's what prepared myself for boards. So, you don't have to think about this now, but the penny book, examination review for ultrasound. You can take a picture of it. Um, it is my, it is like the little golden ticket. I actually still use this, as you can tell. Um, it's very used. I use this working right now, you know. Because uh, we don't know it, everything. It, even if, you, if you're in the industry for 20 years, they'll even tell you they don't know everything. And uh, so we're constantly learning. But it helps.
helps give descrip descriptions and psychology in it. It's got all the basics in it. Yeah, so very good, highly recommended book. Okay, thank Ooh. you.